This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next hour, we're going to take a look at everything from prayer to sex. Sex during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we'll also spend some time talking about a portable sanitizing system. Find out more about that halfway through the show. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Join us at LateNightHealth.com. That's LateNightHealth.com. And you can find us on all kinds of podcasting networks, uh, including uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you name it, we are there, iHeartRadio, and uh, many, many more. We go to, I believe, uh, Seattle, or at least the Washington, Washington State, to talk to our guest, Diana Wiley. She is Dr. Diana Wiley, and she's got a brand new book out, Love in the Time of Corona, Advice from a Sex Therapist for Couples in Quarantine. Diana, Dr. Diana, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Late Night Health, yes. Well, we need, what we, we need better and health, and during these pandemic times and during all the civil unrest we also need a break <laughs> so I, yes, I recommend we do. that if you're fortunate enough to have a partner cocoon with your partner and have some fun uh, well, and let maybe me, even let's, some we'll, let before we start with the cuddling and the uh, kissing and what that <laughs> leads to all the foreplay <laughs> all the foreplay how do you how do you not go crazy because you're locked up with somebody for days at a time? Forget the sex. You know, Mark, you didn't squeeze the toothpaste right. You left something on the counter. What the hell are you thinking when you walked into the house with your shoes on? Those are the kinds of things that people are are, are going through with this quarantine. Forget sex for a minute. I want to get to that because that's one of my favorite things to talk about. Well, and maybe even and maybe more. Maybe even to do, I hope. <laughs> right? Anyway, Mark, so, yes, we should we should talk about how do you get through just this forced togetherness? Um it, it's it's a really tough time. People are not used to being together 24/7. And they can tend to be very critical and judgmental of their partners because we're just not used to having our significant other around 24-7. How do you stop and that? That's really hard. Your shower's too long. Your, you know, whatever that, that cri criticism is, how do you get that to, to stop on both sides? Well, you sit down with your partner and you talk about that and um, say, you know, uh, I need, we need to talk for at least 15 minutes and then have the talk about what's been going on. Observe, observe and with examples, you just gave a whole bunch of good examples, observe um, and comment on the criticism and try to, and if you're hearing it, try not to be defensive. Really, really listen with an effort to understand. You know, there's a reason why we call, call things misunderstandings, because we haven't, we're just listening to prepare our response, right? But we're not really listening to understand what the person is saying. It's very hard to do. I've got some exercises in the book. To, to to assist with this um, and it starts it's in the beginning of the book because in my practice and I've been doing this work for over 30 years not all the time in Seattle I've been here for about 11 years I was in mm -hmm. California before that um, but in in the t in all this time that I've been seeing couples I realize that so many people just really don't listen. They get defensive. Uh, they come out of um, perhaps difficult childhoods where their own inner critic was developed because their parents were so 
critical and judgmental, and then and then you get to be very judgmental about yourself and about others. And so it's very hard to relax and to just play and to have some fun, and especially in this kind of environment. Uh, Dr. Diana, how did you get involved in sex? And I know at 16, 17, <laughs> 18, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> So no, I'm I know. very curious about that too. But how did you yeah. you specialize in 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 working with couples and sex as a sex therapist? Well, thank you, Mark, for asking that question. So I go back forty years, and um, I first got my master's before getting my PhD. And uh, in in California, you need to earn three thousand hours before you can go to Sacramento and take a written and then an oral exam. At least that's how it was back in my time before right. you can get licensed as a marriage and family therapist, which I which I am. And uh, one of my internships was at the VA in Menlo Park. And uh, there were a lot of guys at that time who were vets from Vietnam era. And, uh, and they had, some of them had only had sex while uh, a lot of them, most of them, had only had sex while completely drunk or high on another drug. And so I was assigned the task to talk to these guys about human sexuality and couples co- co- communication. And I found that I did it easily. And part of the reason for that is that I was a lucky girl because my parents were affectionate with each other and with us. And Back, this is back in the 50s. They gave us the facts of life talk on a car trip and, you know, captive audience kind of thing. And right. so my parents were encouraging. They said sex is fun, and it can be fun, and it can be fashion, uh, passionate. And uh, But the, the, the caveat there back in that time was, you know, when you're married. And... Um, so I, I didn't, fi- ultimately I didn't follow, although I was a virgin for many, many years, compared to now, I was virgin until I was 22, um, but but I decided not to wait till I was married. And um, I just think, uh, in the book, I even have a little part about confessions of essentialist. I'm essentialist. I believe in pleasure. Um, I believe that pleasure is a powerful force for healing and connection. And I really believe that pleasure is everyone's birthright. Uh, Our guest is Dr. Diana Wiley, and she has uh, written a book called Love in the Time of Corona, Advice from a Sex Therapist for Couples in Quarantine. I want you to think about this. You know, you've been stuck together, not only for days, weeks, months at a time not seeing other people or seeing very few other people. How do you get through that? This book can help, and then you still have more time, and you can't keep watching reruns of Perry Mason. You you know, you got to be able to do <laughs> something else. And what that something else is, is uh, maybe enjoying yourself and having sex. Uh, we invite you to join us at LateNightHealth.com, LateNightHealth.com. You can also visit us at Facebook.com slash LateNightHealthRadio. And you can visit us at LinkedIn by going to LinkedIn.com slash Mark Allen, M-A-R-K-A-L-Y-N. Dr. Diana and I return with the insane Daryl Wayne as we take a time out to gather our thoughts, maybe do a little bit of business, and have some fun. We'll be back as Late Night Health continues.
Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthere.com. Late Night Help is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Help with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents or just have fun find out about the advertising opportunities with late night health call us at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at late night health.com that's info at late night health.com join late night health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care call now at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of carbon-60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's carbon-60 is the premium carbon-60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize-winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxin cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his carbon-60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne here at Late Night Health. We are talking about, well, we're talking about sex. Um, we're talking about love in the time of Corona. Uh, the book has some really great ideas on, one, trying to get past all the the junk of living with somebody 24-7 kind of locked away together just the two of you but after you push aside the the um, the the problem part some ideas for sex one of the things that I saw in the book that I liked was making dinner with your spouse and so Carol and I my wife and I cook together well I do the cooking she does the cleaning and it works out great so oh, yeah. and that's a good division of labor. Yeah, it and is. And it can be fun. Because she hates, you know, she hates I, the way I, I clean up. Plus, you're not both in the kitchen at the same time. Well, that part, too. <laughs> we don't have to talk to each other that way. Um, 
<laughs> Di- Diana, you give know, us a you know, tip. The, uh, give us a tip uh, for for um, for for enjoying um, and the the passion of your of your loved one. Well, I would say the biggest the the biggest tip is to schedule sex and. Most people give me a little pushback on that and say, well, doesn't that ruin the fun and spontaneity of sex? And uh, the answer is no. You know, think about it. Uh, before the shutdown, the lockdown, when we would go out on the town, we could have a plan to go out on the town. And within that plan, we could have a lot of fun and spontaneous fun. Same thing with sex and planning a date night at home. Within that plan, there's lots of room for spontaneity and fun. And so get it on the calendar and follow through and have clear intentions. I, I talk about anticipatory emotional foreplay. And what this is is where you take the time to talk to your partner and you agree on what each of you wants. Um, this might be a time to talk about what would feel really good to you and special to you and so you can start by cooking a meal together as you have already mentioned or maybe ordering takeout and make set the scene this is so important whether it's seen at your dining room table with candlelight and flowers and maybe fine china or setting the scene in your bedroom with um, clean sheets on the bed and tidying up the clutter and uh making it a a love nest (laughs) and that can be much more inviting Um, and then the other thing that you can do is to give each other a massage or a back rub you know people have much better sex when they're relaxed and we need more I would I would personally kill for a back rub uh, uh, almost any time and yes I love back rubs most people do you know it's um, what's absolutely true is um, that no matter it's a universal truth about human sexuality no matter what your sexual beliefs nothing absolutely nothing beats a good back rub and some people say ditto for a foot massage you know we got I was just going to say that endings in our feet it's kind of the basis of the Chinese reflexology and so all those nerve endings there, and it can help heal you. It's good for your health. There are lots of benefits, sexual benefits, benefits for your health that come from sexual activity. Uh, during that? this, during the time of Corona, uh, COVID nineteen, are you counseling uh, people uh, uh, through tele telemedicine, if we'll call it? Yes. I, I see clients via Zoom or FaceTime. And, and most, in, most, in, in, most professionals are doing that now. Right. Um, if, and we yeah. won't, you guys won't need offices anymore after that. Uh, what? Well, supposedly, yeah. Right. It's fine. But that one on one, that it. even that one on one, when you're working with a couple, I guess, even though there's FaceTime, there's Zoom, there's Skype, the other technologies is it better to to be there in person with a therapist well, is it, it any is different because it, it, yeah it's it's a little different you can uh, really more closely observe the body language and you get some of it on zoom but there's nothing like the in-person visit, but you know we do what we have to do. We make adjustments, and and uh, that's people that have good mental health are usually quite resilient. They have a high tolerance for ambiguity. They can embrace change, and I that's what I've done. I've embraced change, and I've done that all my life, and it's contributed to my being a well-balanced person. I think. Okay. What about people who are um, technology phobic, especially oh, that older is a people? Yeah, and I'm one of those. So I count on my clients to initiate the Zoom call, to invite me to the Zoom call, because I'm not sure how to set it up. Fortunately, I have a husband who's high tech guy. 
But if he's not around, I I need for the the person, my client, to initiate the call. I can do FaceTime, of course. Right. And you have to be able to do FaceTime with your grandkids anyway, right? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Yes, Mm -hmm. it's so important. It really is. Boy, if I could have skipped kids and just gone to the grandparents stage, it would have been nice. No, I have great kids. Oh, I know, just Mark. Even. A lot of people say that. I'm having so much fun with my grandsons who live in Canada. So, you know, I can't see them, of course. But we do have weekly Zoom meetings that usually uh, last um, an hour. And then we oh, do my. interactive things little projects well, and things like that it's 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 good it it taps into your creativity to to make the most of what we have going on here what is the number one problem couples are facing confined quarantined together uh as we have been for the last three almost four months now yeah, isn't that amazing four yes months. it is well, there's, I can't say there's a number one problem. It's, there are many problems, and mostly it's feeling like you're just forced to be with this other person. And so, as we touched on before, there, it, it, that's give, that gives rise to a lot of critical interaction. So we gotta calm that down, first of all. Just like in, generally, when I've been doing therapy, a lot of times I have to do psychotherapy before I can do sex therapy because if the couple is angry with each other, they're not going to want to go to the bedroom or go off and have sex. I give homework assignments. and uh, Got it. Yeah, if they're angry with each other. So we have to to get to know our partners better, have good communication skills, ask, ask the partner... Uh, what they like in sex, tell what you might like in sex. You know, if you think your partner, if you think telling your partner about your needs takes the fun out of sex, try not telling your partner because it's a lot less fun. It's like, it's like going on a treasure hunt without any clues. You know, each person is a little different in terms of, of what they like and what, and it may change over time based on Hormones and the time of the month and menopause and and what about age? And age, of course, age. Right. I'm also a gerontologist, so for years, uh, and well, in the early '90s, I did two studies on aging and sexuality that were published in medical journals. I did them with a physician, and uh, yeah, aging and sexuality. The main problem for men is often performance, but now we have. We have all kinds of things. We are out of time. Dr. Diana, I really appreciate your spending some time with us here on Late Night Health. The name of the book, Love in the Time of Corona, by Dr. Diana Wiley. Advice from a sex therapist for couples in quarantine. And we'll have uh, Dr. Diana's picture on our website. We'll have a little article and a link to uh, to her website as well. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Much more coming up here on Late Night Health. Don't go away as we continue. Dr. Diana Wiley, Ph.D., can be reached at DearDrDiana.com. That's DearDrDiana.com. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servet Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servet at Servet at ServetHassan.com. 